Hey guys, alright, so Travella's back for a whole new edition. Alright, so we're going to do Entropy today. Um, so there are two Entropy videos. So this is the very first one, which is uh, looking at it in terms of the first law of thermodynamics. And as you see here, um, Entropy is this delta S value. So you're going to see a lot of delta S. So first law of thermodynamics. We saw this in one of the other videos. Quick refresher. The total energy here is going to equal all of the heat in that system plus all of the work in that system. So energy equals heat and work. Fairly straightforward. Looking at this, in terms of entropy, we have things that are reversible processes and things that are irreversible processes. So a re reversible process is one where the entropy of the system so that's like the reaction or whatever that's happening um, can exchange value with the entropy of the surroundings. So there's this back and forth. Um, so energy from the system can go into the surroundings and then energy in the surroundings can go back to the system. It's very reversible because the, the energy is still staying in the system itself. Um, so that's like ice water. Um, it can melt and give energy, or it can take energy from the surroundings, or it can freeze and give energy back to the surroundings. It's very easy to exchange that energy. An irreversible process is one where there's some energy that's going to be lost to the universe, and you can't quite ever get it back. Um, so gas expanding. If a gas expands, you're going to cause some level of chaos, and you can't get back to where you were exactly. Um, you're never going to get all the particles back the way they were, so you'll, you'll never get back uh, perfectly. Um, so it's not completely reversible or easily. So there's also this word that is we're going to use, which is spontaneous. So you have to be careful with this word. Um, spontaneous sort of implies a rate kind of thing. Um, in this case, it just means that it will happen without anything stopping it. So if you hold an egg and you suddenly get, let go of it, well, that egg is going to drop, and that's going to happen without any outside intervention. It's just going to happen. Um, this is also not a reversible process, because here we have a dropped egg, and no matter how many of the king's horses and king's men you get together, you're never getting Humpty, Dup hum Humpty Dumpty back together again. So this is an irreversible process. Um, because there is a level of energy or chaos that's lost to, out there to the universe that can never be found again. Okay, um, so going through things, um, processes in which the disorder of the system increases, uh, that are those are going to most likely be spontaneous processes. So things that become more chaotic generally are spontaneous. Um, so they happen without intervention. Ice will melt if you just leave it out on a table. So as long as you're not actively cooling it, ice is going to melt. Um, gases, if you if they have room to expand, they will expand on their own. Um, so these are things that just will happen naturally without anything causing it. Okay. So entropy really is a measure of the disorder or randomness in a system. So whenever we talk about en entropy, we're going to be talking about things comparing order to, to chaos. So when we're looking at delta S here, we are going to say, you know, the final system, was it more or less chaotic than the initial? So if this, this final system was more chaotic than the initial, then we have a positive delta S. So that's going to lead to, oops, there we go, get a marker. So positive delta S is chaos, and negative delta S is going to be order. So every time I talk about entropy, that's what we're talking about. Um, and this is just looking at that same thing. Delta S, if it is a value larger than, than zero, then that means 
disorder reigns. So disorder is positive. Whereas if we go to a more ordered state, that is a negative change in delta S. So a lot of these problems are going to have you predict the entropy of the system based off of the physical evidence, based off of what's happening in that system. So number one, the greater the disorder or randomness in a system, the larger the entropy. So anytime you read, anytime there's a word problem and it talks about in some way or emphasizes in some way that things are becoming mis more disordered or more random, the larger the entropy. That means we're getting pushing towards that positive value or entropy itself is going to be a large value. Um, and this is kind of another example of that same thing. So the entropy of a s substance always increases as it changes from solid to liquid to gas. So anything in a solid phase is going to have a fairly low entropy value. It has a, a lot of order to it. It's very organized. So entry, entropy values for that substance are going to be small. As it becomes liquid, that entropy is going to increase. And then gases have the most entropy. They have the most chaos because it's lots of random motion. They can go wherever they want three-dimensionally. They're just going to bounce around based off of all these random collisions. Okay. Um, when a pure solid or liquid dissolves, we assume that the entropy is going to increase. There's one exception to that, which is carbon carbonates. Um, those compounds uh, complex with the water. So the way the carbonate reacts with the water, um, they actually end up creating a more organized system and not a less organized system. So they're one of the few things that when they dissolve, they actually organize better than if they're solid. Okay, when a gas molecule escapes from a solvent, um, the entropy increases. So your soda can, when you shake that thing up and you pop it, well, that's a lot of chaos that's going to happen right then. The gas is escaping. Gas molecules that aren't dissolved have more freedom, more range of motion to them, so they can go more places. So those gas particles can now have more freedom, which means more chaos. Uh, entropy is also going to increase with more complexity. So if you're comparing two crystal structures, KCl versus um, CaCl2, KCl as a structure is one to one. So every other particle throughout that structure is going to be potassium. Um, so for every one potassium, there's one chlorine. Here, the complexity increases because there's actually two chlorines for every one calcium. So the structure is very complex, which means that as a solid, this guy has more entropy built into him than, than this guy does. Um, he is more organized and ordered, so more K. Okay, next one. This one is actually a pretty big one. You'll see us justify things off of this a lot. So if, uh, looking over here, let's try to get a red pen going. Um, if the moles of gas particles increase, so if there's more moles of gas on one side of a reaction than the other, that's a really fairly easy way to tell if in entropy is going to increase or decrease. Um, so pay attention to this one. You're going to see me do this one a couple of times throughout these problems. So some examples here. Um, so there's six examples. What I want you guys to try to do is pause the video right here, go through each one, try to say if delta S is going to be positive or negative, is entropy going to increase or decrease. So pause it and check this out. You can like seriously pause the video, like I'm not just going to sit here and, and do this. So like seriously pause it. Okay, so here's your correct answers. And moving on, so you have to pause the video if you want to see those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just messing with you guys. No, but um, going back. Uh, the first two should be negative because you're going from liquid to solid, aqueous to solid. 
Um, next three are all positive because you're going from less ordered systems and then the last one is negative. Okay, this brings us to this equation here. So delta S equals Q divided by T. So for a reversible process at constant temperature, the entropy change is the value of Q divided by the absolute temperature. Um, so Q, this is the same Q from Q equals MCAT. So this is just going to be heat. And then T here, this is absolute temperature, which means Kelvin. Um, so oh, I added an E there. Oh no, there we go. Kelvin, there we go, spell it correctly. Um, so looking at this, we can look at the very first problem here. So calculate the entropy change when one mole of water is converted to one mole of steam at one ATM of pressure. Fun little thing, this ATM of pressure, we didn't talk about pressure anywhere through this, so ignore the one ATM of pressure. So what we have here is that we have Uh, one mole of water, so this is liquid water, being converted to one mole of steam. So we're going from a liquid to a gas. So it should be fairly easy to predict this. So predicting this, we can pretty confidently say that delta S here is going to be a positive value. So from there we just need to calculate this. We know we have one mole of water, and for that problem, going back here, delta S equals Q divided by delta T. Um, we just need to plug this whole thing in. We know what, we know how many kilojoules of energy there is for one mole, and that's exactly what we're dealing with. So we have one mole. For every one mole, there is 40.67 kilojoules. Again, this is for one mole. So that means that we're going to release, well, 40.67 kilojoules of energy. Um, going back here, the one thing I forgot to mention is that this value is going to be in joules, however. So we might need to do some conversion. OK, so if we have 40.67 kilojoules, well, there's um, 1,000 joules in a kilojoule, so just multiply this whole thing by 1,000. Um, so that gives us a nice number of... Ooh, try to get that zero back in place. Um, 40,670 joules of energy. So that's our Q value. And we know what the temperature of this is because it's liquid water changing to gaseous water, which happens at 100 degrees Celsius. So add 273 to that. Gives us 373K. So Q minus T, or Q divided by T, delta S equals 40,670 over 373. Oh, that's supposed to be an S right there. Delta S equals, so that means delta S in this case equals 109, and that's going to be joules per degree Kelvin. So like we predicted, this is a positive value here. OK, another problem to look at here. Always try to predict the sign if we can. So normal freezing point of mercury, um, it gives you that value. 
and what is the change when mercury liquid freezes? So we are going from mercury liquid to mercury solid. Ran a fairly chaotic system to more organized system. So that means that delta S should have a negative value. And at the end, we'll have to add that value. So completely solved out, this is what this guy looks like. Um, we take the 50 grams it gives us, multiply or divide by the molar mass to figure out how many moles of mercury. Moles of mercury times the delta H of fusion. So that tells us how many kilojoules of energy this will take. We can convert that to joules. Figure out what the temperature of the system is in Kelvin. Joules divided by Kelvin gives us this value. And like we said on the last slide, well, this has to be a, um, sorry, I'm not, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, this needs to be oof, a negative change. So because of that, this is negative. 2.46 joules per gram per, per degree Kelvin. All right, another problem here. Uh, feel free to pause this one if you want to try it out a little bit, but predict before we do anything. So we have this thing right here, and it gives us the, this fun word condensing to liquid. So we have a gas going to a liquid. And this whole carbon blah 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 nonsense. Gas going to liquid, chaos to more organized, delta S is negative. So going through it, just like the last problem. It gives us how many grams of this we have, divide by molar mass to get to moles. Moles of this times the delta H of um, vaporization gives us kilojoules, kilojoules to joules, Celsius to Kelvin, delta S equals joules divided by K, which equals negative 61.5 joules per K. So again, more organized, so negative value. I put this negative value in. You can see it's not negative in this fraction. I added this based off of what the system was doing. So you will have to kind of keep track of those negatives and positives. Okay, this problem I want you guys to try on your own. Um, so read through it, pause the video, look at it, try it. Um, and the grand total answer for this one is that delta S is going to equal negative 23.8 joules per K. So this is a good time for you guys to try it out. Um, that being said, that's the end of the video. I'll talk to you guys in part two.